Let's do this, shall we? Let's um let's see. Let's go chill mode. And let's resume the game. I haven't even played this in a while. I don't even know if I remember how I do this. I'm the narrator, right? I narrate. Motion Daniel's right. Y'all are beyond beautiful and awesome for being here and for the donations. I appreciate you so much. Thank you to Motion Daniel and Vivi for holding it down. Thank you to Key for being a good friend. Thank you to all of you for being such awesome supporters and lovely members of the Cardlin Audio family. And I forgot what we were doing and why we are here. Is there a run button? Yes, there is. No, no, no. Did we just come from here? Jocelyn 2K9 says, Hello, this is my first stream. Walked in and I love it already. You might have seen me basically spam it, but I just kind of let go of the bears. Especially tiny ones that dance around whenever someone donates. Yes! Am I supposed to go this way? Or did I just come from here? What in... What in God's good name? Okay. Let's get back in the mood. I gotta be the, the narrator. Ooh, yummy. Janes of the Jungle sends a hundred bits saying hope for kickflip's return and a speedy recovery for your son. Thank you so much, Janes of the Jungle. Confused the sounds of wriggling. Mr. Baghead and his friend took hands and slowly approached the curious sound. Whatever could that be? Go back? I want to go back. Quietly, Mr. Baghead and his friend tried their best to... Go in, in, in go. In go. Oh no, oh no, oh no, oh no, 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 no. Okay. I don't like that. Back and his friend did his did their best to sneak past ceiling crawling man. How bizarre the grown up looked, large and rotund, crawling as he did on the ceiling. The whole room shook with his every movement. friend's hand pulsed with fear. Mr. Baghead gave her a squeeze and the two hurried on through the room towards where they hoped safety awaited them. Or not. Mr. Headbag! I, of course, how could I have been so foolish? Anime Chick for Life, to you I give all my thanks. Mr. Headbag and I were feeling out of sorts, you see? It's been a while since we've played. It's Mr. Headbag, his friend, and a grown up they would learn to call. The Ceiling Terror. Whatever were they going to do? They 
needed some kind of energy bulb to open the gate so that they might escape. Headbag searched the room and he thought he might see a piece of energy over there. But how was he ever going to get there with the ceiling terror out and about as he was? No, 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 Oh, how long your hands are, Ceiling Terror. <laughs> Do you all see what I see? Far too fast. Cunning. Mr. Headbang decided to continue his search. something that might help him and his dear friend escape the ceiling terror. this table.
ceiling terror had Mr. Headbag and his friend stopped. However, were they going to make it past him? Okay, so I think I see the power thing over there. But it's way up there, and I don't see how to get it. Not with him just all over the place like he is. Hey, Celestial 2, thank you for the follow. Appreciate you. I feel like we came through here, like the opposite way. No? I don't know. Ah, I'm so lost. Good dodges, though. Calmly, yet surely, Mr. Headbag found a nice place for his, him and his friend to rest, while the narrator took a quick pause and searched in various places on the Ethernet. The narrator returned, feeling thoroughly silly that he forgot one of the most basic and first things the game teaches you. Luckily, the narrator's audience was very patient and forgiving. Simple as that. What am 
I looking at? Thought Mr. Headbag to himself. What bizarre place of nightmares is this? Help me up, dear friend. Friend, help me. Help me. Help me. Help me. Where's the handbag? No, he only had a ma small amount of time before the ceiling terror returned. Along, finally grabbing the power of the cell. Oh, god damn it! And so the terror began to fresh, fresh new. The two made their best to escape the rampaging ceiling terror. Oh, the narrator hoped that he remembered the controls well enough, but he did not. Ah, uh, trying to see if this is the best expression for this moment. I think it is. Come on, let's go. Come on. Little slide a Rooney. Okay. Runny and a jumpy. Okay, good. We can Great time. Into the foreground. Up the gurney. Past the dead bodies. Down the stairs. Under the tables. Onward they went. Ceiling terror. Marauding and crushing the beds behind him as he ran. So close now. So close. <laughs> You'll pay for what you've done, said Mr. Headbag. Close it, friend. Almost. Almost. Friend, this way. Oh, there is the thing, friend. Burn and burn and burn he did. His friend warmed her fingers and extremities by the fire of the withering corpse. Felt good to win one. Mr. Headbag looked down at his friend. She felt peace with the murder, and Mr. Headbag realized that he did as well. Angelica, perhaps, he said, another gas for his friend, playing at their old game. She shook her head, but smiled. Alas, their break was but brief. 
they had escaped one little nightmare, but there were many yet to discover together. Together they descended the elevator. Ascended the elevator. Eager to see what adventure they would come across next. Aha, uh -huh, I hear a television. I know this game where there's a TV, there's a trippy cutscene. So many shoes. How curious. Curious how the camera panned here for a second. Could be a clue. Probably not. Though the rain was cold, her hand was warm, and it was more than enough for Mr. Headpack. These stairs go up, thought Mr. Headback to himself. What are you doing, friend?
grown-ups were perplexed and transfixed by these television sets. Mr. Headback couldn't help but feel a bit guilty, knowing how they had perplexed him as well in the past. isn't that bad. It's kind of dreamy, if you think about it, he said to his friend, swaying as he said so, a playful smile on his lips. Dance with me. Must be a key here somewhere. A key, a key, a key. Somewhere a key to free his friend. Aha.
himself beginning to grow a little tired. <laughs> Not entirely sure what to do. Not entirely sure what this switch did. Sleepy bear and sleepy bird on his head continue to consider their options. Perhaps this changed something downstairs. Let's take this moment to once again thank everybody who helped the hype train get started at the beginning of the stream. All your generosity and sweet thoughts and niceness really help out, especially nowadays when times are tough. I appreciate y'all. I am in box. Sometimes that's all you need. You just need to be in a box.
narrated, couldn't help but laugh at the near comical way with which Mr. Headbag missed that jump. Oh, Mr. Headbag, you are such a silly nonny kitten sometimes. Excuse my language, said the narrator. God. Yeah, how did she magically appear here? Hmm. And if he's magically here, do I still need... Do I still need the key? Hmm, I guess we'll find out. Be right back, dear friends. I believed he might have found himself in a oddly bugged state. Wherein the elevator arrived, but his friend was already with him. the elevator. So what you want to do... Is this right? Get the elevator to go down. Come back up. Call the elevator, but wait on top of it. Yeah. <laughs> His friend was left behind. Did not bother Mr. Headbag none. He was sure his friend would find a way to catch up somehow magically, as she had done in the past. There was nothing he could do to be reunited with his friend. The 
Suzy Q and Louis04327. Thank you for the follow. There was his friend come from the ceiling. Hello, dear friend. Another leap of faith between friends. With each successive one, Mr. Headbag was more and more positive that his friend would never let him go. Friend, push. Ah, good. Oh, excuse me, I'll be right back. Hey, I'm back. Uh, I just got a call from my son. Oh, right. Oh, shit. Oh, God. Push, 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 push. Dang it. Uh, what was I saying? Yeah, I got a call from my son. Got some good news. His fever broke. He's feeling a lot better. He sounded a lot better. And he'll be... He'll be back... To, back home tomorrow. Oh, wait, what's the run button? Oh, shit. God damn it. Excuse 
fever broke, he's feeling better. His girlfriend's everything she dreamed he would be. She, he dreamed she would be. And, you know, they're doing... No, friend! No. 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 Unacceptable ending. Unacceptable ending. Give me your hand. Come on, come on, come on. Hand, 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 hand. Oh, shit. forward the whole time. What am I? What is supposed to? Oh. Oh no. No 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 no. Not like this. Yes. Yes. that to be... I was afraid that was going to be a thing. Missed the head back and his friend took many deep, ragged breaths. They had just escaped through their lives, but just barely. The building was still creaking and groaning around them, and they knew they had to keep moving, but in that moment, all Mr. Headback could think was how he had almost lost her. How he had almost lost his only friend. friends regathered here. What? What were they saying? And why wouldn't they let him go? If only he could make it to that door at the end of that hallway. If only he could see what the screen wanted him to see. That 
big warped and twisted hallway and called to him once more. Maybe this time he could make it to the door. If he could just run, if he could just hit that doorknob. Whatever truth there was to this world lay behind that door and he knew it, he could feel it. If he could just finally, for once, open... Oh my god! Jeez. Even though he had been the one who called him, even though he had been the one who beckoned him, even though he wanted the answers, he knew in that moment he needed to run away. He needed to be with his friend. He regretted ever checking that TV, ever asking for those answers, ever wanting anything more than to escape. Friend. Friend. didn't know what his fascination was with these TVs, these haunted sets, but he decided to use them to embrace him, to heed their calling, if only it meant he could be closer to his friend. 
just for a moment to just for another moment to see her smile again. Yep, good. Solid. Okay, what button am I supposed to be pressing here? If we can just a jump a room, a swing to me, a swing to you. Oh my god. Okay, that was clearly not the button, but I'm glad we made it anyway. Here. Hey, nice here. Television over there. Oh my god, I gotta learn what the jump button is. Mr. Headbag knew there was no time now for such silly thing as hats. There was only time for saving his friend. And for figuring out what his weird obsession with televisions was. button is it? Oh, oh no! Well, that's the thing I just did. Good. Solid. Right. You know, I have a feeling we should find out for once and for all what the actual jump button is. Okay, B just drops. That's not good.
A is normally jump, so why isn't it A? obsessed with it. Vacuumed out their souls by the looks of it.
Oh, good. I don't remember killing quite as many people the first time around. Thought the narrator to himself, recalling a different adventure with similar characters. Onward he pressed. It seemed like he grew farther and further from his friend. Right. Uh, 
Okay, I think I got it. I think I got it. Move this here. Ignore the very obvious secret door that apparently we can't act we can't go to. Tender. I do not have time for pretenders. Throwing Polly Pocket away. Stepping over the freshly electrocuted woman, he took the stool to the door. It didn't matter how many he murdered along the way, just so long as he made it to his destination. Down the ramp, the conference.
two, three, four, five. Okay. Come along, Con. Ah, electricity, of course. You will forgive me if I remain a little quiet, my dear audience, begged the narrator. I'm simply engrossed in this all-too-consuming game. I am like its occupants, and this game is like its televisions. Better yet, I feel we're drawing close to an end. I have a feeling it's not going to be the ending I know. No, 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 no. I have a feeling it's not going to be the ending I wanted, but an ending nonetheless. Butthole faces. It would appear the TV has turned their faces into the shape of a rectum. A rectum, big twister back, head back. I, I barely know that.
<sighs> How he dearly wanted to be reunited with his friends again soon. Climb, you ass! God damn it. Give me such Yes, sometimes. Give me the hands. Come on, we pull pull on the hands. Give me the give me my friend! the door. We bash the door. And we bash the door. Well, we drop the axe. And we climb. Yes, we climb. And we escape. And we dive and we climb. Terrifying. Oh, that's so scary. Oh, come on, drag it faster. It's good enough. It's good enough. It's good. You're doing great. You're doing great. You're doing great, sweet. Pull. Come on. Ah. Pretty unfair how the game assumes you know gives you exact the, the amount exactly the amount of time to do what you need to do with very little wiggle room. It turns these dramatic moments into frustrating moments. Go oh, and pull and run. Jump. Mr. Television. Where's the tall man? Jump. Okay. Focused. Got this. Though the tall man drew ever closer, Mr. Headbag knew he could be faster. He needed to be faster. Anything. Everything. To save his friend. Mr. 
to head back. She needs you. Don't stop, don't hesitate, not even for a moment. Oh, come on! Once more into the fray, just to head back. And the jump. Ah. And the run, 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 run. And the jump and run. Lure! Lure is here! Oh my lord! Long time no see, Lure. Go! All man could reach him no longer. What does this mean? Friend. No. What is, what's happening? Even in her incorporeal form, friend was still guiding him to safety. But did this mean it was too late for her? Beaten and broken, Mr. Headbag climbed in search of the truth. the head back, removed his head back. Sure how, but he pushed and pushed and resisted he did everything he could to keep the tall man at bay. He wouldn't let him have him. He wouldn't let him win. The very city seemed to tremble in response.
reached the head bag, reached for his head bag, realized it no longer would fit him. No. He would be Mr. Headbag no longer. He found himself thinking of his friend. Six times had she saved him. Six times had she helped him undo his wrongs. A fitting name, he said. Too bad I never got to tell her what it was. tunnel, always that crisped and crossed pathways that didn't make sense. There's no way to deviate from the pathway, just to move forward, yet it never ended. And it seemed every time he entered a new hallway, he was identical to the last.
The narrator said a big thank you to Slabby for the 500 bits they sent, along with saying, Just popping in to spread some love and hope you all are enjoying the gameplay. Slabby. Thank you so much for your generosity. long last, he realized the trick. It was the music. That seemingly ever-present lullaby that haunted him.
is quite cross with us. And... No! This is no way to treat your dear old Mr. Headbag! It's us! It's HB! Good old Mr. Headbag! You remember us! Oh, come on. Come on! You don't mean it! Not looking too good. Don't worry, not friend. Old headbags will fix it. It's a, it's a job for HB, as they say. <laughs> sit tight, and I'll have you back to your old self in a jiffy. You free friend. You and I will never grow up. We'll never be like them. 
You'll see. friend.
Get up, ding dong. Come on, you ding a ling, keep running. Sorry about your toy. Do help me up, would you? Sit here and watch TV. <laughs> Just like the rest. I understand now. Bag understood. What doesn't simply grow up? One is made to grow up. A grown up is forged by disappointments and heartache. Trails. Crushed together like diamonds to make you grow nice and tall.
the narrator would like to thank you for joining us in the production of Little Nightmares 2. Starring the hunter, the teacher, the ceiling terror, the butthole faces, the tall man, the friend, and of course, Mr. Headbag. We ask that you not leave any trash behind, and that you ensure that your personal belongings are not left on the seats beside you. This has been a Tarsia Studios production. I have been the honor of being Cardinalio, your narrator. Can now, uh, we are lifting the embargo on spoilers. You can say whatever you like in terms of spoilers of part one or part two. Any theories you might have regarding the story. Any interpretations of the ending. Let's discuss. Thank you, Hoshino Haruka. That is very true. Let's hear it. Let's hear them theories. Let's see what y'all think. What happened there? So we know from part one that Six isn't necessarily a good person. We saw them eat our little Francis friends. Uh, and throughout this one, you see little hints here and there of how they relish in the violence and the murder of the grown-ups. Pamtown says, I think the hat dude chasing you is you from the future. Motion Daniel says, there's a secret ending, too. Punko says, it's said that the friend, when she was taken into TV, she saw the future, and to keep the timeline in check, she had to let him go. Honey Silk says, it seems like an endless loop. Six gets rescued by Mono, but that results in her betraying him and going to the Maw. Little B. Mason says, so they say that we play the game backwards, that part two is part one. And when Six drops you, that's when we enter the ship. It's a never-ending loop that Mono grows up, becomes Thin Man, and then it never ends due to the tower. Shaylee has followed. Thank you very much, Shaylee. Oh my god. Well, we have got a, no a number of options for what to play next. We've got Bowser's Fury, we've got Super Mario Galaxy... We got this game called Hunting Simulator, and I normally wouldn't play a game like that, but it has an expansion pack called Bear Season, where apparently you hunt bears. Um, there's a couple of other games. Let's see if I can pull it up without ruining... Yeah. Uh-oh. Hopefully that didn't ruin anything. Let's see, I know I installed some other games recently.
you know, Donkey Kong Country Freeze or something that's supposed to be really good. Six betrayed him because when he took the, off the bag, he recognized a thin. She recognized a thin man, ironically creating him by betraying him. When Six was taken by a TV, she split. Her good self stayed in the TV. Her body left that world, but she got that endless hunger she had in the first one. In the comics, you can see how she gets to the mall after. Should play Sally Face. Nope. It also seems like the tall man tried to warn Mono all this time from becoming him. Also, all the Nomos were once kids, and they got turned due to the world they live in. Brooklyn MMA... Brooklyn Momoa says, Hi, I'm new here. What's happening? Just finishing a game. Uh, should have left her trapped in that room, man. It seems like the endless loop. Six gets rescued by Mono. Yeah. Yeah, let's see. We got Mario, Super Mario Galaxy. We got Bowser's Fury. We've got Bear Hunter. We've got Haven. That's that sci-fi dating sim kind of game. We got Donkey Kong Country Freeze or Tropical Freeze something. What do y'all want to see next? We can play some Mario. <laughs> Franbo says Punk Ghost. Nah, those aren't my kind of games. It's kind of lots of voice acting, click adventure games. Not really for me. Girls heading off to bed. Good night. I want to see if there's anything that happens after the credits. And then I want to watch that secret ending with y'all. Brooklyn Momoa says, there's a game called Lollipop, you have to show a cam. Nah, I don't do cam. Carlin says, I think you got, uh, Punk Ghost says, I, got, I think you gotta watch the secret ending on YouTube. Yeah, I intend to. I'll get it set up after this.
Thank you everybody who's stuck around. Thank you everybody who's leaving. Thank you for being here. Thank you for joining me. Beating this beautiful game. I loved it, especially that little twist at the end with the betrayal. It was oh, so delightful. I kept waiting for that moment that was going to be like the first one where you eat Francis. I remember that moment broke me. And in this one, it was this, uh, it was the same... That feeling of betrayal, and it's like, who are you? And not knowing who you are. Oh, so good when you reach that jump and... She lets go. Shinoharuko says, Oh, also, supposedly the distortion wave from the tower, caused by the Thin Man and now by Mono could be what causes the other distortions in the Little Nightmares world. The further they are from it, the more sentient or conscious they are, which is why the people from the center of the city are mindless zombies, and the boss from the beginning kept some aspects of themselves, the teacher, the doctor, etc. You gotta find all the screen kids for the secret ending. Oh, I definitely stopped looking after a little while. I need to find some. They gotta go through all of Bandai Namco Asia. Oh my god. Fast button. Skeep. Does anybody know if there's anything at the end of the at the end of the credits, or should we just go ahead and switch to the uh, secret ending now? Punk Ghost says, "How much do you like horror games?" I'd say about a four out of ten. Machino Haruka says, "I really like the lore of this game. If you couldn't tell, I could tell." <laughs> It's a really beautiful game, and the world is so twisted and unique. I, I really love the design and the look and feel of this world. It's such a pleasure to play. I don't normally play horror games, but this is like one of the few exceptions I'll play just because it's so beautifully made. There isn't anything. Okay. I'll go pull up the secret ending. Done. Oh, it looks like credits are finally done. Yep, alright. Exit the desktop. Give me just a sec to get this set up. Alright, here we go. This is where we last left off, with us becoming the Thin Man, or the Tall Man. The, hall the hallway straightening out.
here we have the secret ending. I see. So that's why people are saying that, like, that's when the hunger starts. And she's split into two. Okay. That's cool. I gotta pull this stool. Oh, you gotta pull it, Dashie? Okay. <laughs> Alright, y'all. Well, there it is. Where are we? It's such a happy. We have beat. Little Nightmares 2. I asked what y'all want to see next, and y'all are saying Super Mario Galaxy and or Bowser's Fury, so we'll be doing those two next. But for now, we done did it, y'all. Aw, that's so cool. Haruka, I didn't know that was the, uh, I didn't know that was the situation. You got into it because I played it all those years ago? I was, oh man, I was so into it then, I'm so excited to get back to it now. This one seemed a little shorter. Um, the twist came a little later, so you didn't, like, that. the last one, the twist came earlier, and you're like, you had to live with it. Like, you're like, that's who you are. You know, you had to, like, deal with the fact that you're that person. And here, the twist came at the very end. But still, I liked it. They're both beautiful games. If I did choose one over the other, I'd probably say, I'd probably recommend one. Um, but still, I'm glad to have played it. Thank you so much for joining me. Thank you for all your input and your tips and hints and uh, this the energy that y'all bring kept me up and kept me happy. For now, we're gonna go and end the stream, but. Uh, Look forward to next time with some little Super Marios, and maybe I'll add a couple of more tricks and tricks and bits to this stream deck now that I've got it up and running. Well, all right, thank you. On behalf of myself, Motion Daniel, and Vivid Leash, and Bam Snix, and everybody here over at Cardlin Audio, thanks for being here. Thank you for your generosity. For those of you who followed or subscribed or resubscribed or gift subbed or gave bits or donated, I love y'all. You keep the dream alive. Thank you very much. And I'll see y'all at the next one.